ideas are generated sometimes just by the act of allowing yourself to be open to the change and not be so nailed down to an idea. Um, I've never been really good with saying, this is how it has to go. You know what I mean? Even in my commercial work, people will hire me, but they'll never say to me, do exactly what's on the paper. Incorporating my, my, my personal work into my job is more the action of what I kind of am asked to do. I, I am constantly playing with different ideas, um, cameras, lights, and then I'll test them on things, very abstractly just test them without any purpose or any idea of where I'm going to use it in life. And then what I do is uh, when a job comes up, I say, well, there's always this. Like you have this idea, which is your meat and potatoes, your basics of what you need to take care of. But what if we did this, you know, we took this idea and we applied it to your concept. So that's what that comes out of. It's, it's, um, so at this point in my life, at the age of 60, I've, I've basically gotten to the point where people hire me for what I do personally. They want the personal mind, uh, the personal uh, projects because anyone can take basically the majority of pictures I take. There's no, there's no mystery to any of it. Um, but they want somebody to say in the middle of doing something that's very simple, this is the next step it can go, or this is, how, this is how much farther we could push this idea and create something that people haven't seen. I started journals like over 30 years ago, starting out as just being tech, tech books, you know, taking Polaroids, writing down lighting diagrams, um, reminding myself how I did certain things just to keep constant little notes. And then as I sat on airplanes, I would basically um, start taking the extra Polaroids and writing notes on them or just basically ranting, like whether I had a great shoot or a bad shoot or, or just something I wanted to remember about the whole experience of being in, in the place or with the person. And then those went from being, they started kind of growing. Those started growing more. The tech, tech journal started going away. And then I just started getting more and more objects, like I would find pieces of paper or scraps of piece of paper off of walls, and I started drawing in the journals, and they started kind of getting more and more and more um, elaborate. And then they started basically going back from being photographic sometimes and more just pieces or just graphic elements that I'd found that, um, that I thought were interesting and in how they went together. Um, but it was a great way just to flush my mind, just to kind of go, you know, you're, you're so focused on being a photographer sometimes that you forget that the majority of photography is so inspired by other things, you know, whether it be light or paintings or a walk through a Richard Serra sculpture that can inspire you to suddenly see in a different way. So. I, I started teaching years ago and, and, and it's basically taught me a lot about myself because I have to be able to explain myself to my students. My, I feel when I'm teaching I try to be as, as, as open as possible. I used to bring the, the uh, tech books to, the, to the, the classes and the students would go through you know, just you know, looking at the pages and how I lit certain pictures and that. And I, but then I have to explain it still. So I, I, I like the process of basically looking back at myself and say, why did you do that? Because in the moment, sometimes I have no idea why I did it. They're interested in what you're doing, and they may actually interject into, well, is this how you did it? Or maybe I was thinking this is what it is. And then it makes you think about maybe how you approach the image or how you approach the idea at the time. And I kind of like that constant questioning because no one's perfect, and I'm not perfect, and I, I always can learn more and more about photography. I mean, I'm 60, and I'm still learning new things, and with digital photography coming out of nowhere when I started with film. I mean, I've gone through shooting chrome to negative to now digital, you know, and those are very three different processes and you have to understand a certain amount of technology and a certain amount of uh, what is and what isn't or how much you can break it, which is even the better part of it. I always like learning the point where if anyone says to you with any of these processes in digital or anything, well, you can't do this then I always say, okay, well, if you can't do this, then I'm gonna see how far I can go over the line and see what happens when you do do it. Because that's when the interesting stuff usually happens. I think sometimes I'm intuitive. Sometimes it's, uh, I, I find it much more the abstract mind that I, that I have less and less sense of time and space and what I'm supposed to be doing half the time. And as I get older, it even gets more so, where I kind of accept the moment and and say, well, okay, well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know. And with work, it's even funnier because it's become that way with work where 
if I'm on set with somebody else and they say, well, the actor's not going to come till tomorrow now. Well, if you got so wrapped up in your head, you're going to be photographing this person and, and all of a sudden you're doing something else or you've worked yourself up to take this picture. You can't do that. You kind of, when they walk in, they will be who they are. Is And I like portraits like that probably more so is that, um, I mean, the pictures of Annie Leibovitz and Seliger and all those guys, they really think those pictures out, you know, and that's great, you know. I kind of like the moment showing up and just kind of saying, well, what is given in the moment that you and I have decided to sit here together and, and what do I see about you that I want to capture? And then I want to be able to see you seeing me, you know, so I try to keep it as simple as possible. So, so I have, I have uh, 30 journals, probably you're talking like 50 pages, so thousands of pages um, that have illustrated different points in my life who have ba basically I've gone from being very simplistic and, and basically very basic to being very abstract nowadays. And, and, but I still go back to being the basic sometimes just because it's comfort, comfortable and it also expresses what I'm thinking about. I mean, you know, with all the things happening in the world, um, the journals become more and more of a place to go to to basically just vent and, and say things and do things. Um, so, and since the journals were always something when I was younger, I didn't really care if anyone liked them or not or, or was interested. I just, people started looking at them and I really didn't want people's opinions because a journal is not kept to basically have opinions. It should be just your opinion and what you're feeling in your journal. And if people relate to it, they relate to it. And if they don't, they don't. It's kind of like the purest sense of art is a sense of, uh, as uh, Richard Serra would say, is art is purposely useless. Well, you know, it is a useless process to basically try to think that anyone would be interested in seeing it, but it, answers a lot of questions to yourself by the act of keeping journals, you know, memories or thoughts or just ideas, so. I think it's important that, uh, to inspire. I think in inspiration is something that you should strive to basically do and almost more so than the creative process. As long as you're honest to what you're doing and then people are inspired by that, that is a bigger conversation. I've been lucky enough to be interviewed and talked uh, on a couple different things that got out there and then I had an experience a couple years ago I was standing on a subway platform in Brooklyn coming back from visiting a, a friend and this young kid walked over and said uh, I've seen you on on the internet and I was like oh well, what do you think is well, oh, you you're the guy you're you were talking about creative process and I had done this interview for this uh, this blog um, or this uh, online uh, site that was about called camera bag tv and they interviewed photographers and i talked about the creative process and that and and he was he was completely inspired by that and he was talking about it how it inspired his work and that and i said well what are you doing he says i'm a graffiti artist so he wasn't even a photographer he was more inspired by the point of creativity and that to me was like holy christopher this is actually where i've always wanted to be in life to be able to say is having someone say to you this inspired me to be able to do this which i i get all the time i get people sending me pictures that say from on, on Instagram and they DM me and they say, I was thinking about your work and I've always wanted to try it, so I basically just let myself go and I, I basically created a picture like that, like that you've done. And then I always say, that's great now, now see where you go with it. You've now figured out how I did my picture, now you need to basically take it to the next level and find your own voice in it. So.